I looked at information about my department and the university. And I looked at it and I'd seen that model before. And at first it triggered me emotionally because I thought somebody was an anthropologist. I thought that's what they studied. I thought they were going to get their PhD in anthropology, cultural anthropology, which means whatever it means. But the department was dedicated to behavioral science and they were identified as behavioral scientists. And I didn't know if it might have been for a particular period of time, but what was more important was the way the department was ordered and the way the curriculum was set up. And I was horrified. That's the kind of stuff that murdered my mother, slowly, over the course of 30 years. It made my mother into a human guinea pig, I believe, because my mother and father were invited into some sort of cult, and they said no. And because they said no to being a part of this cult, they tormented my family for a very long time. And the problem is that cult is powerful. At some point, they did something where, as the firstborn, beautiful young girl I was, I think they coveted me and decided they had designs on me. And they've been tormenting me my whole life in this way that's very American, but not unique to America. It's part of a practice that goes back very, very long time. You see, they needed my mother and my father to make a sort of buy-in on a soul level, and they didn't. And they did what they did. I've done what I've done. But when I saw what I saw, I was like, wow, that person was the person I thought I was going to spend my life with. I'd hoped at one point I'd altered my life and I made changes to my life, hoping that he and I would be together one day after we spent some time together and after I showed that I could adjust to what his expectations were while he was in a completely new setting, doing new things, and we would develop a kind of trust and I told myself in a secret part of my mind, I said, if he had as much faith in me as I had in him, we can change the world. It was just this weird woman's intuition thing, something I'd never accepted before. Didn't matter what any of my old friends said. Didn't matter what kind of adjustments I had to make. At the time, at least, I had some material stability and access that he did not have. And it did not in any way make me feel like lesser of myself or of him, that I would be able to provide a certain kind of foundation, at least initially. I did not know how comprehensive the conspiracy was. I did not know that me and him were both engaged in some sort of process where other people had other interests, and they saw us as a means by which to get what they wanted for themselves without engaging us. See, the problem is, is that maybe some of the things they wanted or some of the things they anticipated were things that I would have cooperated with and could have yielded a great deal of prosperity for many people. They just decided they were going to do it without telling me. And then they made me into this kind of patsy, which is completely racist. It's like the Irish patsy. And then not only was it that, uh, it happened to fit a particular phenotype. So by the time I ended up leaving that situation and went somewhere else, what I saw is that what I saw at this university was what they had exported me back to Chicago to set up on another level. I was supposed to be in partnership with someone comparable in a comparable structure, but with a different social milieu. And I was as equally divested of any consideration of my contributions having any merit, including what it took in the liquidation of my family line in order for this model to get what it wanted or needed to engage in this manner. See, somehow someone thinks, especially in a situation of persistence, that there's particular model or modality or methodology for organizing, especially if you do not have access to a legacy of members of a standing army, or you do not have access to political power as a form of attempting to engage statecraft. 
And so I saw it in the first one I saw it, I was like, okay, well, you know, I have to deal with this because I already know enough about this person to know that there were a lot of things about my life that he was exposed to that were probably triggering for him just by being in the country, going to university. By the way, I never got to graduate college, much less get a PhD, right? And so then now it's like, well, how many times has my actual capacity for education as a woman? You got to understand, I was the first woman in my family to graduate high school in the way I did. I was the first person to even try to go to college. I'm not allowed to go to college and get a degree. All these other people I used to know, they got PhDs now, JDs now, and they don't want to talk to me, but they've got these models for their lives that were literally based upon the strategic destruction of my entire family line in a conspiracy of silence and nobody wants to talk about you see this is the problem this is not just some white woman's rage i wasn't a white woman and even if i was well i mean now we are where we are Behavioral sciences is a leftover holdover from what the Nazis did. Because it's not just about analyzing people's behavior and trying to understand their motivations and then figuring out how to design policy in order to attempt to address people's needs and create circumstances that help them figure out how to have their needs met. At the most basic level, presumably, that's what it is. You analyze it, you make hypotheses, you test them. After you test them, you implement policy. It's not what the fuck it is. And nobody wants to call it out for what it is. And the problem is, is that I don't come from a family of people that were highly trained engineers. But a lot of the people now who want to call themselves scholars of the humanities did. And I keep thinking about that notice I got when those plumbers showed up in Flint, Michigan. And they were told they couldn't do anything because they had to wait for the budget. But somehow they had the fucking budget for a whole army of beautiful young ethnically distinct women and men to come in and apply a behavioral science regime to analyze and watch and observe people try to get their resource needs met and now everything in society tears to first making sure your behavioral analysis provides the data somebody else needs to correlate with their index so that they can get paid for their job. I mean, that's in the United States. I'm not allowed to talk to anybody from any other country. I'm not allowed to talk to anybody even here. And my whole thing is like, who's going to actually lay the pipes? You had people laying pipes downtown while sewage floating all around. Presumably it was a health pandemic. They're wearing a goddamn bandana signifying a very different gang affiliation than the guys on the other side of town. Was that your behavioral science? If it was, you know, you really should have just been fucking forthright with that. Did you guys really spend all that time getting your PhDs so that you could play the Chicago School of Social Work all over the damn world? Where you were going to prop up the Blackstone Rangers so that you could get your cat back through Blackstone, through your pension fund, and then maybe get some assistance for the refugees in other parts of the world? See, that's the model I saw. And presumably, that's the model that somebody wanted to dismantle because it was oppressive to their people. I don't want to speak ill of the dead. Your colleagues, your colleagues, they decided to commit serious fraud when they completely misrepresented their analysis of my behavior in their professional capacity. 
I've watched two presidents of foreign countries get murdered as a result. It was that good. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but there's too many of them. There's too many dead people. There's too many quality dead people. I don't know what's left. Nobody comes out of hiding. Nobody admits who they are, what they're doing. It's just in a narrative history for some sort of war crimes tribunal. If it was, you would have admitted that you were seeking to get information about the misappropriation of cultural artifacts and cultural property. But you didn't and you wouldn't because you wanted it for yourself and you thought you could wield it better. This is war. You did the oldest tactic on the planet. You used a woman's body in order to stake a claim. And then once you conquered her, you thought you could conquer her people. Rest in peace.